Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So we have been discussing about the spin stabilization. So you may be wondering why we are discussing about the spin stabilization. So later on you will see once we start with the uh, reaction wheels and the control moment gyros. So at that time you will see that though the reaction wheel um, it is used to actuate the satellite, but uh, if suppose uh, I have a satellite, uh, let us start uh, because we need the this concept, so we will discuss it here. So, uh, this is a satellite and inside this I have a wheel mounted on one axis. So, it is rotating about this axis. So, if this wheel is rotating on this axis, so what you are doing that you are giving it momentum bias, angular momentum bias. So, from outside the satellite may not be rotating, okay. it is a possible that from outside the satellite is not rotating and you have already set the wheel rotating before putting it into the orbit. So, whatever the direction of the initial direction of the satellite it will be maintained until unless some disturbance comes into picture. So, the same thing we will look through one uh, gyros uh, through the YouTube video and uh, if you want you can go and look yourself in those videos. So, uh, there you will find that uh, he, once a spinning wheel, okay, it is a put in a box. So, uh, there is a box in which it will be inserted. Okay. And then it is left on this corner. So, this box remains in this position itself. So, you can understand that the satellite behaves in the same way. So, you can consider the box to be the satellite and there is a wheel rotating inside okay, which you are not able to see what is inside there. But because of this wheel, this box will be able to maintain this position. So, uh, <coughs> the same thing whatever we have been discussing about the spin stabilization. So, here this refers to the case where the your spinning velocity may be constant. So, the any other changes are not taking place, but there can be case like this wheel is spinning here and if I further increase the angular speed means we accelerate the we give it angular acceleration to this wheel. So, you will see that because the this system is free from the external torque, this is my satellite which is free from the external torque. So, the total angular momentum must be conserved. Here, if we are torquing it means there is a motor here suppose in, in this place there is a motor and this motor is root, uh, once you pass electricity through this motor. So, this wheel will accelerate. Okay. You can increase the voltage input so that the wheel uh, goes at a faster speed. So, once it uh, accelerates, so uh, you can see from outside, outside you, we are not applying on this any other torque. Okay, so, the angular momentum of this system, this plus this must be conserved as a whole. So, this implies that if it accelerates here in this direction means the anti clockwise. So, this will the satellite, the outer part of the satellite, it will go in a opposite way means it will go this way. So, it will start rotating here in this way. So, this way by actuating a motor inside by putting input signal to the motor and we can make the wheel accelerate and thereby we can make the satellite rotate about this axis. So, we can uh, similarly if we have on other axis say if, uh, if I have a bigger box and I have three wheels mounted here, one wheel here, one wheel along this axis 
and another wheel on this axis. So, they are perpendicular to each other on three different axes. Okay. So, by moving these three wheels, you will be able to control the angular orientation, angular velocity of the spacecraft. So, uh, so in that context, we are using this as a torquer inside. Okay. So, it acts as a torquer, but if it is moving at a constant speed, if its speed is maintained, then it will try to point in a particular direction and this is what we are studying here in, in this particular topic. So, spin stabilization, it refers to the case where the satellite is set into the motion along one of the axis, uh, one of the axis and then thereafter uh, the satellite keeps uh, uh, rotating along that axis. So, uh, it may be that uh, because of the internal friction your uh, the wheel may start dying out. So, you would like to maintain at the same angular velocity. So, uh, that can be done obviously, that is a different issue, uh, it is a uh, circuit issue um, basically electrical engineering or either uh, electronics issue whatever it can be said. But the main thing is here the dynamics part that if you are uh, there is a angular momentum bias inside. So, if I have a angular momentum vector here. So, until unless I apply an external force on this or external torque, it is uh, not going to change its orientation. So, the same thing you can uh, consider through say if, uh, we have a rotating wheel and somebody is handling it here, okay, a person is holding it and he is sitting on a chair which is a revolving one. So, he is sitting on a chair and it is a revolving one, then uh, let us say that it is a rotating like this, okay. seen from his side. So, uh, so, it is something like this, this is uh, uh, or we take this. So, uh, suppose this is the axis. So, around this axis it is rotating like this. Okay. So, it will rotate like this. So, there is a wheel or you can think of like a Okay, you can think of like a cycle wheel. This is a suppose this is a cycle wheel and here this is your axle okay. and this wheel is rotating. Okay, so, it is a rotating in the anti clock based direction. So, if the we look from the uh, this person sitting on this revolving chair point of view, so uh, we will change the direction it will look something like this. Okay. If we look from the person side from this side, so it will be revolving in this direction. And if this person he applies a torque on this axle and tries to change its position from this position to this position. Okay. So, this wheel comes from this position to this position. Okay. So, here in this case you can see that this is the angular momentum vector. Here the wheel speed is remaining same. So, this angular momentum vector goes here in this place. So, there is a net change here in this direction. Okay. Little bit inclined because uh, this uh, if we show this as the magnitude. So, it will appear like this. So, it is a little bit inclined. Okay, it goes like this. So, and this is your delta h. Okay, so we know that this delta h by delta t, this is nothing but our torque. Okay, so this implies that the change of this vector from this place to this place, it implies that there is a torque applied along this direction. So 
as a result of this now i am not going to discuss uh, the whole details but as a result of this this person will rotate on this axis okay so here a torque is so uh, so he uh, starts this person uh, starts rotating about this one okay so why he is rotating because what he is doing that he is applying a torque to this wheel okay and as a reaction of this because this is free to rotate so this one is rotating so in which direction it will rotate and other things we will discuss it in the once we uh, start the Okay, so we will discuss uh, these details later on. So, uh, we go to what we have been discussing earlier. So, what is whatever we are discussing, it is purely relevant to the satellite because you are not going to actuate the satellite continuously in the orbit. So, what is required that if the satellite is going here in this orbit, so it should be pointing in a particular direction inertially or it may be that it is always pointing toward the earth. Okay, so, a camera is there which is always pointing toward the earth. So, in that case, it is required that it rotates at a constant angular velocity about this axis. Okay or it may be required that all the time the satellite is pointing in a particular direction okay which is in the case of the hubble telescope you know that it's uh, used for uh, measuring the location of the stars so uh, so this is inertial orientation and while this is the earth pointing satellite so both these jobs can be done through the spin stabilization so uh, say uh, here in this case if i have a wheel which rotates such that its angular momentum vector is directed along this direction so it will try to maintain its orientation and we want to study here whether this kind of configuration like here my hubble telescope in the orbit okay and uh, there is a uh, aperture here through which the star at a distance it's a uh, being observed so, whether it will maintain this orientation throughout the orbit or not. So, this is what we are trying to study. So, we have written the Euler's dynamical equation and then we are trying to get into the uh, get through the dynamics that whether this kind of uh, rotational configuration where this uh, suppose this is rotating here or in the case of the Hubble telescope, we cannot afford to rotate the whole telescope itself, but here inside we can put uh, some wheel which is rotating and then it is uh, trying to maintain this orientation this is possible or either some, uh, some very uh, precise active control system just like the reaction wheels or uh, like your uh, the small uh, <coughs> thrusters are there which are uh, micro thrusters uh, available. So, this can be used to continuously maintain a very precise direction. Okay. So, that becomes a part of control once you are using the thruster continuously and trying to maintain the orientation. But if we are trying to put a momentum bias just like we were discussing here that uh, this wheel is rotating here and therefore, this will always point here in this direction until unless it is a disturbed. So, uh, that kind of configuration we can achieve. So, uh, that is called the uh, stabilization part, but here it is a because it is a coming because of rot momentum bias, it is not because of the external torque being applied okay. if you are the internal torque itself. So, that we are uh, we have uh, the reaction wheels inside which is being rotated and it is uh, trying to maintain this orientation. So, that is part of the controls that uh, you point it in a particular direction, but here we are not discussing at this stage any uh, matter about the controls. We are discussing about just about this dynamic system where one wheel is rotating inside or itself 
this is a satellite which is rotating on its axis. So, whether it is stable or not, whether it will maintain this orientation or not, this is the topic we have been uh, uh, working with. So, in this context, we worked with the Euler's difference, Euler's uh, dynamical equation, and there we saw that we derived this equation theta 1 double dot plus 1 minus k c theta 2 times And another equation that we derived is equal to 0 and theta 2 double dot we got this equal to 0 means theta 2 dot this will be a constant and therefore, theta this will let us say this constant is c. So, this will evolve with time. So, c t plus let us say this and we can write it in this format. So, this says that here the theta will continuously grow with time. So, we will discuss about this issue, uh, let us first develop this. So, in this context then we um, wrote alpha 1 equal to theta 1 cos theta 2 plus theta 3 times sin theta 2. So, basically this part we are taking from this place theta 3 sin theta 2, s theta 2 is nothing but your sin theta 2 and similarly cos theta, this is cos theta 2 and theta 1 times cos theta 2, this part is uh, written here in this place and alpha 3 then we wrote as minus theta 1 sin theta 2 plus theta 3 cos theta 2. So, we utilize this information to get theta 1 double dot this particular one okay, in terms of alpha okay, and the rate of change of alpha. So, we have derived using this. So, follow from your uh, last lecture. here c theta is nothing but cos theta 2. This theta we have replaced by unnecessarily we are not carrying this 2 notation. Uh, we understand that this is the um, pitch angle we are using here. Okay. Similarly, s theta is sin theta 2. Okay. So, this we have derived in the last class. So, the way we have derived, similarly we can derive theta 3 dot. Okay. So, for this, 
we need to work out using this. So, theta 3 dot we can write as alpha 1 dot is theta So, what we have done that the alpha 1 we have written this equation alpha 1 and alpha 3. So, we differentiated this okay. and after differentiating this we are trying to get uh, this theta 1 dot and theta 2 dot. Uh, so, I will write the previous step uh, so that there is a continuity. multiplying equation of alpha 1 which is our equation number 3 that is equation 3 by sin theta 2 and this we are writing as sin theta means we are have written this as s theta okay, in the short notation. So, multiplying equation by 3 by sin theta 2 and uh, equation 4 by c theta means the this is cos theta 2 and adding Okay, that yielded us the theta 3 equal to alpha 1 sin theta 2 plus alpha 3 cos theta 2. Okay. Similarly, equation 3 by c theta and equation 4 by minus s theta and adding else theta 1 equal to Okay. So, thereafter what we have done that we were interested in see here uh, the equation we have the, this is bit, bit uh, involved equation. So, what we are interested in that we want to replace this theta 1 double dot and theta 3 double dot and here theta 3 dot theta 1 dot okay. all these quantities theta 1 and theta 3 here. So, in terms of alpha 1 and alpha 3. Why we are doing? Because we see here in this place, okay, these are not constant terms. Okay, these are the periodic terms. It's a, the, this coefficient. It, uh, it's a time-dependent term, which is a periodic term basically. 
and solving in this for format it's a formidable so it's a better to reduce it in the format where it the coefficients they all appear in the time independent format so this manipulation so this assumption we are doing to get rid of this uh, periodic coefficients so for this we are uh, assuming this that the uh, alpha we are defining uh, one variable alpha 1 another variable alpha 3 which equal to theta 1 cos this part basically this part has been copied here in this place okay and alpha 3 another variable has been defined like this just by changing this to with minus sign okay and uh, these two equations then we are using to get theta 3 and theta theta 1 and thereafter we are differentiating these two equations so by differentiating and we have got this equation last time okay theta 1 double dot and similarly theta 1 dot also we got so uh, i will just make a note of that this here in this place Okay, so the theta 1 dot we have got as alpha 1 dot c theta okay though we it's written afterwards so this equation is differentiated to get this equation and that we have already done by arranging the terms and all other things so i need not repeat all these things but for the continuation of the lecture i have to reproduce all these things here this is the difficulty we face because the, there are equations and we move uh, once the lecture ends uh, for a particular day so uh, we have to recall all the things so that we can proceed Okay, so uh, first we got this, from there we are getting this theta 1 dot and from there then by differentiating this and doing all the ins replacement or the insertions, we are getting this theta 1 double dot. In the same way, by differentiating this theta 3 equation, we get this equation. So if you differentiate it, you will get this equation. Okay. And uh, where we have use this theta dot we have written as omega s plus omega 0 and uh, so theta dot is nothing but your theta 2 and so theta 2 dot this is nothing but your omega r because this is the this is the Euler angle and this is being measured with respect to the orbital axis with respect to the orbital axis okay and this we have uh, i have explained you in the last lecture So theta 3 dot we have written, we, if we differentiate that, so we get theta 3 double dot. You can check all these equations because it is a time taking, so I am doing it quickly. So, we are using this equation, this equation is being differentiated. This is equation number 8.
Okay. Now, uh, we have got this theta 3 dot also and we have got also theta 3, theta 3 double dot and theta 3 dot. So, we need to insert these values here like theta 3 dot is here okay, and theta 1 dot is here, theta 3 dot is here. So, theta 1 double dot. So, all these quantities we have derived earlier. Okay. So, these quantities need to be inserted here in this place and we need to rearrange this equation. So, uh, rearrange these two equations. So, uh, if we rearrange these two equations, so we get it in a simpler format where the coefficients are independent of time. Okay. Means, they turn out to be the constant coefficients and therefore, those equations can be solved easily. The uh, stability of the system can be uh, described in an easy manner. So, now uh, insert all these things. So, we take the first equation here, uh, we have theta 1 double dot, we take this equation, the first equation. Okay. So, inserting for theta 1 double dot, theta 3 dot and theta 1 and all these parameters here. in equation 1. So, equation 1 I am reproducing here. So, this part is your theta 3 plus sin theta 2 theta 1 times cos theta 2. So, this we are writing as alpha 1. So, alpha and this c theta 2 we are writing as c theta, okay, this part. So, here c theta we have written and then we are writing here alpha 1. So, this equal to 0. So, this looks little shorter than the previous equation. So, from different equations we need to insert all, all these values. So, theta 1 double dot this quantity then becomes alpha 1 double dot c theta this equation is bit long. All these things are tedious, not difficult, but tedious. This is this particular term which is written here in this place. This equal to 0. So, this has got converted here into this format. So, still we need to rearrange it because the you can see that s theta, c theta all these terms are there. So, still it is a uh, these are the periodic terms. So, we need to eliminate so, we need to rearrange this equation. So, 
rewriting the above equation. We are rearranging the above equation. Omega r being replaced by omega s plus omega 0. So, these terms we need to rearrange it. So, by rearranging we can see that this gets reduced to So, expand it and check this term. So, I am writing the final result here in this place. These are the few shortcuts I have taken. Okay, so, we can insert these values here. So, this gets then simplified
this is our equation number 10. Similarly, the equation for theta 3 dot it can be reduced So, still you can see that these are sin and cosine dependent terms. Okay. So, still we have not got rid of these terms. So, this is the equation for theta 3 dot that we have written earlier. See here we have uh, taken the case of the uh, satellite which is symmetric about one of the axis, uh, it is called the inertial symmetry. So, um, uh, so, because of that your equation is getting simplified, otherwise if you look for the 3 axis satellite, okay, uh, because in that case your theta of, uh, 2 double dot this has got reduced to 0. If you do not assume that symmetry, so this will not be equal to 0. So, that will pose another problem. Okay. So, the equation it becomes formidable. So, in this place wherever the k is appearing this k we have assumed it to be i 0 minus i divided by i, where i 0 is the moment of inertia about the i 0 this is about the axis of symmetry. Okay, so, uh, theta 1 double dot we have already reduced. Now, we are working with uh, theta 3 double dot. So, inserting for already we have got theta 3 double dot, theta 1 dot, theta 3 etcetera. So, uh, insert all these things here. We cannot avoid this mathematics. Alpha three, this is C theta. So, we are inserting these values here. You can develop the whole thing, you do it yourself and then match it. It requires little patience, but you can do it. So, this equation has been written here. Okay. Now, we need to reduce it. So, these terms can be rearranged.
now we need to replace this omega r by omega 0 plus omega s If you are genuinely interested in learning this subject, then you must derive the, all these things. Because at one stage or other stage, I have derived all these equations. Okay, so this one we have deduced and written here in this place. So, do this part yourself. So, multiplying equation 10, the previous equation, this equation and uh, equation 11, this particular one okay, by c theta and s theta and adding. So, p, you can see that uh, there are the terms. So, if we multiply like uh, the equation 11, this equation by s theta, so we get here s s square theta term, this will be s square theta term and here alpha 3 times c theta times s theta. If we go on the previous page, so the, so the previous equation we are multiplying by this c theta. So, here this we are multiplying by c theta. So, alpha 1 double dot c square theta and here in this place we are getting alpha double 1 double dot sin square theta. So, this term will add up and we get alpha 1 double dot and we get rid of this sin theta term here. Similarly, this term is here uh, alpha 3 double dot, this comes with a minus sign alpha 3 double dot and he, this comes with a plus sign. So, this term will get eliminated while you add. So, thereby we will get terms which are independent of periodic or time dependent coefficients.
there is all the terms we need to add. So, some of the terms will drop out, this term drops out, okay. then uh, we have the term here, this term and this term drops out and uh, here this term and this term drops out. So, this equal to 0. So, this gets simplified to alpha 1 double alpha 1 double dot plus 2 omega 0. 1 plus k. Here this term and this term will add up, this gives us alpha 3 dot, this is with minus sign. Okay, similarly here this term and this term adds to give minus alpha 1 okay. and these two terms add together alpha 1 and this equal to 0. So, you can see that in this equation we have got rid of all the sin theta and cosine theta terms. So, therefore, here let us first write this equation, rewrite it. So, minus 2 omega 0 alpha 3 dot omega 0 alpha 1 plus 3 omega 0 square k times alpha 1 this equal to 0. this term and this term because alpha 1 is common. So, we combine it So, this is the equation in alpha 1 ok. Similarly, we will, but here you can see that alpha 3 dot it is appearing. So, still it is a coupled ok, means the roll and the yaw they are remaining coupled, they have not got dissociated. equation 10 we have multiplied by this is equation 10 and this is equation 11 by c theta and s theta. Now, what we are doing that we are doing it by s theta and c theta. Okay. So, there we have added here we have to subtract
and subtracting equation 10 after multiplication from equation 11 after multiplication. So, basically the we have equation 10 here. So, this equation 10 we have to multiply and equation 11 we have to multiply. So, we have to subtract this equation. So, we will put a minus sign before this. this is our equation number 11 and this is our equation number this particular equation. Okay. So, we are going to multiply this particular equation which is equation number 10. So, for equation number 10 once we multiply, so alpha double 1 dot s theta we are subtracting. So, we are I am putting a sign right now here. and then we need to simplify this. So, uh, whichever the terms they drop out we need to eliminate them. So, we can see that this term, this term they cancel each other. Okay. Then what else we have here? These two terms will add up, this term and this term they will add up. Okay. So, this way we have to look for the terms which can cancel out and which will add up. So, uh, here we have this term here alpha 3 dot multiplied by this quantity okay. and uh, the same quantity appears here with a minus sign here. Okay. So, this term and this term will drop out. Okay, they will cancel each other. Similarly, we have a term here which is multiplied by this alpha 1 s theta c theta and we look for this term. Here this is the term. So, here you see that before this there is a minus sign. So, this term and uh, this term will drop out, this term will drop out and therefore, this equation can be simplified. So, if we add and simplify these equations, uh, simplify them. So, this gets reduced into this format alpha 3 double dot s theta s square plus c theta s square
Okay. So, we have got these two differential equations and these differential equations can be solved now, because you see here this term it is a completely constant, this term it is a completely constant, omega 0 is a constant, a spin rate you are taking this as a constant okay. and uh, omega 0 is the orbital angular frequency or the orbital frequency. So, uh, the coefficient now in this equation they turn out to be constant, here also all the coefficient this and all these terms are constant and therefore, the simplification is possible. Okay. So, uh, this has already got simplified, now uh, we need to uh, work with these equations and uh, look into the dynamics of the system, how the system will behave. Uh, whether it's a, we are we are interested in looking for stability of the system. So th through these two equations, we are going to look into the stability now. So we'll continue here in the next lecture. Thank you very much.